Next on Health Matters, surgery is often a key part of breast cancer treatment. Joining me now to talk about surgical options and advancements is Dr. Alyssa Throckmorton, a breast surgeon with Baptist Medical Group. Welcome on being here. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, we're talking about women's health in this month's segment, and we talk about a lot about breast cancer and screening for breast cancer. Um, the first question I want to ask you is, how important still is, I get asked this every day, do I need to get a mammogram or not? And what about uh, self-breast examinations? Is that important? And, and when do I really do that? So before we get into treatment, first I want to talk about a little bit about prevention. Sure. I think screening is still important, um, especially in the you know 40 to 70 year old range, um, annual mammography. Um, one of the newer things that Baptist is offering for women with dense breasts, because that is a risk factor for breast cancer, and um, about a year, year and a half ago, there was state legislation that now requires women to be notified of their breast density. Um, Women's Health Center now has an automated breast ultrasound program that they're just getting started, and that can be used as an adjunct to screening mammography. It's still considered a screening study, um, but it's potentially will find additional masses or abnormalities that might not be seen on mammography when you have dense breasts. So for certain women, that's going to be a good additional screening option that's available. Um, will still that one, in, unlike screening mammography, does require an order from their physician. Um, in women after the age of 70, because 70 was the age in which most women were included in mammography studies, um, after that age, I think a lot of it has to do with what you as their physician um, think is their overall health. So if you've got a 75 or 80 year old woman who has hypertension that's well controlled, she's fit and active, there's no reason not to screen that woman because um, treating an early stage breast cancer potentially could um, improve her longevity. Um, on the other hand, if you have somebody with a lot of comorbidities who's not particularly fit, who you expect may not survive their comorbidities for the next five years, then that may not be somebody who benefits greatly from Food screening. Exam, yeah. Now, what about uh, self-breast examinations? And uh, the questions always asked, what, regarding the menstrual period, when's the best time to do that? Uh, a lot of times I encourage people to do it at the same time every month. So regardless of where they are in their cycle, at least try to ensure that they're at the same point in their cycle. Um, but one good time to try it may be about seven to 10 days after they start their period. That just tends to be the time when the breasts are the least hormonally active. Um, it's the same time frame we use for breast MRI. And so that may be a good time frame for young women. And if someone finds a lump, uh, they shouldn't just say, well, it'll go away. Uh, they need to go ahead and seek, seek uh, to get evaluated. Sure. Um, I think evaluation for a new lump is always good, especially in our area with the demographic that we have. We have um, a fair amount of what we call triple negative cancer that we see, and that's more common in the young African-American population. And so certainly I think um, young women who find a new lump should have it evaluated by their physician. Obviously, the majority of those turn out, fortunately, not to be a cancer. So not to freak out. If you find something, it's better to go get it checked and make sure. Now, in the unfortunate situations when you are diagnosed with breast cancer and you require some type of surgical procedure, kind of walk us through the thought process between doing a simple like a lumpectomy surgery versus a full mastectomy. Um, a lot of that's going to be very patient um, individualized in terms of the re recommendation from the surgeon. Um, certain people will not be a candidate for preserving the breast um, and some of that has to do with the size of the cancer um, compared to the size of their breast. Um, if there's sometimes if there's skin involvement or what they call inflammatory cancer that may not be you know it's not an option in that circumstance usually to preserve the breast. Um, fortunately though most early stage breast cancers are have an option for either preserving the breast or having a mastectomy um, for some women and the great part is it's been well proven in the scientific literature that the survival is the same. And mm. so when I see somebody like that, we talk about the differences between having one versus the other. Um, for a lot of women, the main difference is do they need radiation or not? Because if you preserve the breast, typically you require radiation. Um, so that's sometimes the discussion that we have. And I usually encourage the patients to choose based on what's important to them. So um, let them be a part of the process. Absolutely. And, and it makes breast cancer a little bit strange for 
some patients because for certain diseases, for example, if you're seeing somebody with hypertension in your office, you don't lay out all of the drugs that potentially they could take for hypertension. You write them a prescription and say, this is the which one mm -hmm. I think you need. Whereas for this, it's something where the outcomes from a cancer standpoint are equivalent. And so patients are offered the opportunity to participate in that decision making. Um, in our practice, we've been, um, we're fortunate right now, we're helping um, to recruit patients for participation actually in a clinical trial that's being done by the University of Michigan called the I Can Decide study. And there's a group there that's looking at decision making aids and tools. And for this one, it's for anybody who's a candidate for both lumpectomy or mastectomy. And they're looking at what kinds of um, educational material can actually help patients be more satisfied with their decision. You know, one of the complications that we see a lot from patients that have had mastectomies is lymphedema or swelling in their, in their arms. Uh, what kind of new procedures are you looking at to help prevent that? Sure, so one of the biggest things that's made an impact on the number of women who have lymphedema was the introduction of sentinel lymph node biopsy, which was introduced in the late 90s. Um, that has dramatically reduced the amount of lymphedema that we see these days. Um, unfortunately, up until now, um, one of the criteria for having a sentinel node biopsy was we had to, you had to have um, basically what were considered um, clinically node negative at the beginning, meaning we don't see any evidence that your lymph nodes are involved. And if you present with a large lymph node you can feel or have a biopsy that shows the lymph nodes involved, you are not a candidate for a sentinel node biopsy. Um, this is We've gotten to kind of the time where now with the introduction of chemotherapy before surgery, people are presenting with nodal involvement, but that's sometimes in certain circumstances being eradicated by the chemotherapy. And so there are two new clinical trials that are open across the nation that we hope to have open at Baptist in the next couple months for patients who initially present with nodal involvement um, and then get chemotherapy and if they appear to have no their node, um, nodal disease eradicated at the time of surgery, then they will be a candidate potentially for avoiding an axillary dissection, which is what's going to put them at most risk for lymphedema. It, ladies, y'all need to understand from what Dr. Throckmorton is telling us is that, uh, number one, with the screening, if you find something, you know, go get it checked out and make sure it's okay. And the other thing is, if there is a problem, there's all kinds of new options that that are available. And, and the key thing, which I think is wonderful, you have a say in some of the treatment options that, that you might have for breast cancer. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Next on Health Matters, some things you may not know about one of the most common health exams. I'm Dr. Mark Castellall, stay with us.